First of all, I came here in 1970, and at that time, uh, I met Teddy Shedlovsky. He was retired, I believe. Uh, he was often available in the faculty club telling stories, and that's how I met him. Uh, but he, he had started this concert series really the year Casperi Auditorium opened, 1958. What he did, as far as I heard the story, I mean, I wasn't here, was bring in friends. He was very interested in music, and he knew all sorts of people, um, you know, particularly the, the people who later in 64 started the, um, the Guarneri String Quartet and so forth. As far as I know, he, he started these concerts, and then only maybe a couple years later did they open it up to the p and sell tickets, and it became quite popular. But as he became too old to carry on with that, he, he asked his friend Jerry Edelman to take over. Remember, in those days, as far as I know, the university administration had basically nothing to do with this. It was run by faculty. Jerry uh, wanted someone to help him with it, and he always had a student in his lab who was interested in music. At that time, there was a, a, a student named Urs Rudishauser who played violin, which was Jerry's instrument, and they talked a lot about music. So Urs helped him for many, many years. I basically just came to the concerts once in a while. I, I wasn't involved. Uh, when Urs left, uh, then there was another student, Leif Finkel, who I, who I did work with in neuroscience. Uh, Leif left, went to Penn, and so right in 1990 was the year when there was nobody else, and Jerry finally turned to me. I, I think Urs must have told him I wasn't that great a pianist or something. He never listened to me play. But anyway, he did ask me to help. And so what it consisted of in those days was talking to managers, uh, ma coming up with lists of potential artists to book, and going to Jerry, who would look at it for about five minutes and say, take this one and this one and this one, and don't take that one and that one. Uh, and, but I learned a lot doing that. Also, in those days, I typed up the programs. I sold tickets. Uh, I put, put brochures in mailboxes at the hospitals across the street and did all of that. Uh, when Jerry left a couple years later, Torsten Wiesel, who was president, asked me to take over officially. And at that time, also, some of those more prosaic duties got turned over to, uh, at that time, what was the public affairs office. So my job then was just booking the artists, and th that was wonderful because you know I, I got to work with managers and I got, got tickets to concerts from uh, people that wanted to play here. And I've done it ever since. Uh, what I can say about it is this. It, it's both wonderful and, uh, and terrifying, and uh, 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 there's one part of it I hate, and that's the part of saying no. Right? I have, we currently have six concerts a year. That was dictated by the 2008 recession, basically. I'm hoping we'll get it back to more. Uh, but the number of agents that talk to me is more like 20. And you know, for example, I have recordings from 40 different string quartets that would like to play here. And so the most common thing I have to do is say, gee, I'm sorry, I don't have room. I, you know, you're great. But and, and w when I say terrifying, I mean, uh, what happens if I book somebody who turns out to be a dud? Right? Um, we don't have a huge budget. People think there's an endowment for the concerts, but there isn't. Um, the concerts were just the, the Rockefeller concerts. Torsten decided to rename them after Peggy Rockefeller. Uh, David Rockefeller was wonderful. He always he made the largest single donation to the concert, separate from his other philanthropies with the university. Uh, but it was not an endowment. It was just some support. We had to sell tickets and, and ask for donations from other people as well. Uh, I never met Peggy Rockefeller. Uh, but I'm sure that she was a big influence on David in, in getting, and he came, and Torsten came uh, to the concerts, and it, it was always, a, it, it, it was sold out. Uh, th that deteriorated uh, after that time. I think, you know, pop music became much more available. The younger people were less interested in classical music. I feel sorry for them <laughs> to say it. Um, but, uh, and financial pressure. So, uh, but we've kept it going, thanks uh, in, in great measure to support from Mr. Rockefeller. Uh, and now it's getting stronger again, as I think the economy has picked up. And I'm very, I, I get enough compliments from people to think maybe the choices I'm making are good ones. 
I can say here, I, I won't say off the record because this is on the record, but um, I satisfy one of my own urges by always having every year an opera singer. Uh, they may sing, usually not opera, but what's called Lieder. A Lieder is a German word that just means songs, and it doesn't mean the songs are in German, although they often are. They might be in French, Italian, Russian, what have you. Uh, and I almost always have a piano soloist because I love playing the piano. Uh, other than that, we mix it around. We, all, we pretty much always have a string quartet because people love string quartets and then whatever else comes along that's available. Some people love jazz, some people hate jazz, so I c compromise there and have a jazz concert every two or three years. My wife loves jazz and loves jazz and helps me uh, find good, good musicians to do that, as do other people. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I've done it since 1990, and uh, it, it now it's, it's just part of what I do here, and I, I, I hope it benefits the community. We actually had a, a 16 concerts here in the 1970s, and you had to buy a subscription, but they had, were, there were two half subscriptions, so you get eight or the other eight or all 16. And it never came up that there was anything else. It, it, it was sold out to Rockefeller and people at the two hospitals. We, we didn't even have to worry about the public. And let me say that was wonderful for booking artists because you might get a famous pianist, um, dish, uh, um, oh, well, I thought it was a singer, Dietrich Fischer, Dieskau, uh, someone like that. They would appear at Carnegie Hall, and there would be an ad in the New York Times, only New York appearance this year. You know, that's how they sold tickets. But the deal was we did not advertise, and so it was understood that this was what was technically called a private concert, um, and we, we could have someone who was also at Carnegie Hall or the Met Opera or whatever. Uh, later, as our audience fell off, we decided that we did have to advertise. We started doing it on an individualized basis. In other words, we would ask the artist manager, would you like us to advertise or would you rather we didn't? And we still do that. Uh, but we also people can say, I don't, I don't want all these concerts. And, and we decided two things. One, to let you buy as many tickets individually, and that's what everybody else is doing too. You know, the Met Opera subscriptions are way down. People just don't want to commit themselves. And another huge thing that was important was allowing people to use credit cards. Believe it or not, the university did not have a way to pay for things with credit cards at that time. Um, and so we got them to do that. May maybe the food services had something to do with that as well. And that helped us a lot. So now, yeah, you can buy one concert or all of them. If you're a student, we have a very low price. I think it's $10 a ticket. And that's funded by donations that we ask for from the uh, people who buy the subscriptions. So that's, that's the fine. The, in terms of finances, you know, this is not the place to discuss it, except I'll say the university provides some subsidy, and uh, in particular, you know, they could charge us rent for the hall, but they don't. Uh, that would be a big item if you were somewhere else. Security, those sorts of things. And now, of course, the, um, the development office rather than the public affairs office helps with all the details, and that's worth some money that, you know, we don't have to pay for.